To safely explore the world by sailboat, you need a lot of things. You need a strong boat, you need good equipment, but more than anything, I think you need to be flexible. The oceans of the world are full of terrifying weather, but if you're patient, modern weather forecasting allows us to pick perfect weather windows for the vast majority of short passages. So in a lot of ways, the most dangerous aspect of sailing is when you can't be flexible. As legendary sailor Lynn Party put it, the most dangerous thing about cruising is a calendar. But this week, we're forced to confront that danger head on, as we've only got a few days to sail all the way to Porto Heli Marina so that we can leave the boat and fly to the United States, where we've scheduled appointments with specialists to assess Isabella's medical condition. But beyond our calendar, we've got another problem. Between us and our destination lies one of the most treacherous headlands in the entire Mediterranean. Cape Malais is infamous for its rough seas, sudden weather changes, and strong currents. In antiquity, the Cape was known as the Cape of Storms, and it was so feared by sailors that they would make offerings to Poseidon in an attempt to secure safe passage around it. So although we've got some amazing sights to see along the way, we've got to ask Poseidon to forgive us for having a schedule so that we can safely make it to Isabella's medical appointments halfway around the world. I love how much intensity she brings to it. She just like <laughs> dives her face into it. This is my little eater, making mom proud. And we're going to begin with the eyes open, a nice soft focus, just aware of the space around you. Although we're in a hurry to sail the rest of the way around the Peloponnese, the wind is currently just not good for rounding Cape Malayas. But tomorrow looks like it could be perfect. So although we're low on time, we're gonna take this opportunity to go ashore and check out one of the most beautiful beaches in all of Greece. Okay, what are you thinking, like right here? Yeah. Well, what do you think? Yeah, good. Yeah, you know, kind of flappy. Oh, also, Oso's gone. Anyone seen a little black dog? He's with another family. Time to enjoy paradise. What do you think, buddy? So pretty, man. I love it. Hey, what's up, baby? She's like, oh, dad. Have you seen all this sand? It's great. I'm gonna put it on a blanket so you can see it better. I think we need to figure out which beach is actually the coolest beach we've ever been to. The best beach we've ever been to. I mean, have you ever been to a beach that has two bays connected like this? I don't think so. Double beach. Look, <laughs> she's doing her head thing. Dwight, don't, don't show her that we see it. Yeah, look. <laughs> But yeah, it's cool that she's already at an age where she likes places like the beach, you know? Like there's so much new stuff that's like entertaining for her. Since having Issa, our pace of life seems to have slowed down so much. We never really used to be the kind of people to spend all afternoon chilling on the beach, but recently I've found that I love watching her interact with something new. And I feel like I can spend hours watching her play in the sand or in the water. Jordan, on the other hand, still has that itch to move and explore. So I wasn't really surprised when he ditched us in search of the highest peak he could find with his trusty adventure buddy. I wanna talk real quick about a habit 
that I've gotten into over the last couple years that has honestly changed my life. Now I'm kind of a particular person. I have a lot of drive, like if I set a goal, I am very motivated to push towards that goal. And it kind of feels like my brain never rests. Like I'm constantly doing something, trying to imagine what could go wrong. And honestly, it drives Desiree a little bit insane. Now I've found that there are two things that help me deal with my mental craziness, and that is exercise, and I need to do that regularly. But the other thing is meditation. And I found that through meditation, that if I just sit quietly, I can find a mental stillness that is beneath all my concerns, worries, fears, whatever. And I feel like I come out the other side of that meditation as a much more balanced person. And that's why I wanted to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Headspace. What I like about Headspace is it's basically an app where there is a ton of different guided meditations. And you can choose meditations that are focused on whatever specific topic you're interested in, and it will basically walk you through a meditation. If you're a beginner, it will help you learn what is meditation, how do you do it, what do you do, what do you not do, right? But also if you've been doing it for years, it's still a great tool to help get through meditation in a way that's rewarding and new and interesting every time. In fact, you can try Headspace completely free for 60 days if you click on the link in the description or if you scan this QR. And please let me know in the comments what you do for self-care, I'd love to know. The next day, Poseidon must have taken pity on us because the forecast looked great. So we took off as soon as the sun rose in hopes of transiting this treacherous stretch of water with the highest chance of finding calm seas. So we are very lucky to have the weather window that we have today. And we're going to take advantage of it to go around Cape Malayas, which you can kind of see up ahead of me. Strong winds, unpredictable currents, and sudden changes in weather makes Cape Malayas one of the most treacherous passages for mariners in the entire Mediterranean. The Cape's treacherous reputation has deep historical roots, which are revealed by the ancient saying, when you double Malayas, forget your home. This point was reflected in the beginning of Homer's The Odyssey. The story begins with Odysseus and his crew approaching Cape Malayas, fortifying their rigging and scrutinizing the weather, aware of the Cape's treacherous reputation. But just as they neared the pivotal point, the wind transformed into a violent gale. The powerful gusts overpowered their sails and towering waves surged and crashed against the hull. All of their attempts to steer were futile and the ship was forced off course. By the time the storm abated, Odysseus and his crew were far out to sea and completely lost. And so began Odysseus's epic 10 year voyage to try and find his way back home. But all of that set aside, it is an extremely beautiful place, very rugged, very awe-inspiring, mountainous, rocky, very intimidating. So fingers crossed that we have good weather going around and otherwise I'm just gonna enjoy checking out the scenery. over there yeah he's being very nuzzly for some reason yeah he's been on team jordan since isa's been born <laughs> so i take every cuddle moment i can get with him <laughs> all right so we made it around cape malayas unscathed the wind is still super light and we should be motoring for another couple hours and then we should have some really nice wind with us for the second half of the day up to porto heli so we're gonna enjoy the calm seas and enjoy the scenery. It's really interesting. This side of the Cape is super green. The other side was very barren, very deserty. I didn't see any green at all. I love seeing places like this where two totally separate weather systems join. So the weather systems of the Aegean meet 
the weather systems of the Ionian and you get totally different effects on either side of this cape. So yeah, pretty cool. This is great, Yay, baby. Wee! With her big chunk of cucumber. I'm ready for a huge There's omelet. Four eggs in each. <laughs> wow, that is gonna give us energy for the rest of the day. <laughs> Looks good, bud. Thanks. How's it going up here? Good. I mean, just so relaxing, so chill, so yeah. few boats. It's very nice. Great. On our way to Porto Heli, we got to sail by the beautiful town of Manimvasia, which in addition to being absolutely stunning, Manimvasia has been known throughout history as being a refuge for pirates. The natural geography of the place, a rock plateau linked to the mainland solely by a narrow causeway, made it a formidable hideout for pirates who roamed the Aegean and Mediterranean seas. Here, pirate ships could easily blend in with commercial vessels and fishing boats, making it difficult for authorities to distinguish between legitimate seafarers and pirates. Once a raid was successfully executed, the pirates could retreat to Manavasia, where they would find everything they needed, places to repair their ships, ample storage for stolen goods, and a local population that was often more than willing to trade with them. The fortifications of Manimvasia also offered vantage points for lookouts. Pirates could spot incoming naval forces from afar, giving them plenty of time to prepare for either a standoff or a quick getaway. All right, so we are about an hour and a half away from our destination, and we have just been sailing wonderfully for hours now. The wind picked up and we've just been blasting along. So it's been a really nice day. Although Isabella threw up all over me and all over Desiree at different times today. She was getting real fussy with me and like, like crying. And then she just threw up all over me. And then she's just been this happy baby ever since. Yeah, same thing with me. She was getting like squirmy and like kind of like cry -y. and then all of a sudden it just came out like a waterfall just like Ooh. yeah I, I smell seriously right now i smell of bo and baby vomit yeah. it's like such a terrible combo uh, i need to take a shower <laughs> sweet sweet smell Sailing of the with sea your baby i hope it'll go away soon god i hope so too man hi oso have a kiss oh thank you baby Oh, thank you. Oh, so that's so nice. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Yeah, but it's interesting. It's much more civilization-y than we've seen in a long time, you know? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. The houses just look more put together. Like they definitely have air conditioning, you know? Yeah, like there are actual steps down to the water, not just like a cliff. Right. Which, I mean, I like scaling cliffs. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Okay, go ahead, the green. Are we ready? We are ready. Baby is ready for a nap, which means once I put her in there, she's gonna cry her eyes out oh. until she sleeps. So we are getting ready. We're gonna head over to Porto Heli Marina, which is right here. It's in the same bay that we're anchored in. And that's where we're gonna leave the boat for a month while we go to the States. So we've got a couple days to kind of put the boat to bed, get it ready to be left alone. And then we've got a flight to catch. Now, as per usual here in the med, we're going to be going stern to the dock. There's ground lines here. I'm feeling good about it, but I am not super low key casual about it yet. So fingers crossed we don't hit anything. I got faith in you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, every time I'm like, oh God, we're gonna hit it. And then you just like, boom. Uh, just mm. do it. Just get in there. Uh, yeah. yeah, baby. She's like, yeah, dad. Dad does a we're good gonna job. Nail it. Hello, good morning. This is sailing vessel Atticus. We are approaching the marina now. We should be there within two minutes, I'd say. Okay, I see them. You see where they are, bud? Yeah. Well, 
like a glove, buddy. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Cool. So, yeah, that went well. I mean, I'd say it went great. Yeah, I think you did a great job. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. Okay, so we are in the marina. Now, we're planning to be back in the States for an entire month to take care of Issa's medical issues as well as to visit family. And getting the boat ready to be left unattended for that long is a tricky job and requires a lot of work. But the first job is to rinse everything in order to prevent any runaway corrosion from occurring while we're away. And when I say everything needs to get rinsed, I mean everything. What's going on over here, buddy? Well, I'd like to leave the refrigerator off when we're gone in the States, so I'm just emptying out our last little bit of food. Got the freezer left. I just got a thaw it. Oh, man. A nice brick of ice right there. Whoa, sweet. Bye. What you gonna do with that? All right, but I hope you're ready for a huge breakfast. I just used all of our leftovers and leftover vegetables. So we got pork chops in there, sweet potato, zucchini, roasted veggies. So everything in the fridge breakfast. Nice. Hope you're hungry. Thank you. <laughs> hey, bud, how's it going? Oh, we need to leave in like. 10 minutes basically and it started pouring down rain outside for the first time in <laughs> ever since, like, been since in we've been in Greece like I'm trying to just do all the last minute stuff and of course like I'm having some issues with electrical stuff that I'm trying to deal with some of the seacocks I could barely close I thought I had everything planned out and like ready and of course there's a bunch of last minute stuff just coming down to the wire what do you think Julie are you drooling everywhere okay time to go yes Time to go. Hey, baby. You okay in there? I'm telling you, what timing. Like, it's been overcast all day today. Rained a little bit last night, but like the minute we gotta go and it starts pouring. Every little thing just compounded to make it way more complicated than it had to be. I, I wish we would have gotten footage of it, but the dog place that we dropped Oso at is really nice, but it is in the middle of nowhere. Really rough dirt roads to get there, and the cab driver was pissed. Yeah. That's why I didn't film, because it was just, it would have been insult to injury. Like, he was upset, and He's I would have been like, like... Throwing up his hands every five minutes, mm -hmm. like... So he's gonna be there for, yeah, the next month, which is a real bummer. We're both really sad about that, but at the same time, it does look like a really nice place. So I'm sure he's gonna have a great time. Yeah, so now here we are, hotel. We have to wake up at 3 a.m. I think it's in like five hours. Yeah, so I'm like so exhausted. But Issa did good, and Osa seems to really like that place. So I bet you it'll take him two hours to be like, this is my new life now. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> 